Hey everyone, welcome to FPL Clue for another video. It's time to do a team selection for the double game week 23, where Arsenal and Manchester City play two games each. Please leave a like and subscribe the channel for more weekly FPL contents. And please stick around until then as there are plenty of talks such as how my team performed in Game Week 22, my team selection, my transfer plans, my captaincy picks and of course we will be discussing the bench for the Game Week 23. But before that, as I promised that I will announce the top managers of my mini league on monthly basis, here are the top 3 managers for the month of January. I thank all of you who joined my league. A huge round of applause for all of you and for these three managers who worked really hard and scored some really good points in the month of January. And these are the top three managers who performed really well since Game Week 17 when my mini league was first started. Massive shout out to these guys as well as they are smashing it. So this is how my team performed in Game Week 23. 92 points and a green arrow. Went a bit differential on the captaincy pick which didn't pay it well enough. Scored from the spot against Crystal Palace and got all the 3 points but blanked the second game of the double gimmick against Leeds. A total of 36 points and a massive 14 points less than Rashford triple captainers. But still a green arrow after 4 consecutive red arrows feels good. Nothing really much to complain about. Nyonto turned to be a good transfer while James' substitution just before the hour mark was the disappointment of the game week. KDB was benched but Pep Guardiola said that it was tactical decision, nothing more than that. So that shouldn't concern you a lot. So this is how my team is shaping up for the double game week 23. In goal as always I start Kepa, he's turning into a FPL great, scoring a massive 29 points in the last 3 games. They play West Ham away next who are not solid in attack. They are amongst the team who haven't created a decent amount of big chances, shots on target or expected goals. And with Reese James and Chelwell back from injury and some new signings, there are a lot more expected from Chelsea from defence to attack. Kepa is making lots of safe so we have the luxury of getting some safe points as well. And of course in the low scoring games he also gets bonus points. Moving on to the defense, Luke Shaw is the first defender for this game week. Leeds away doesn't look very ideal, especially what we saw in the midweek, especially when Casemiro is suspended. It might not be a good game from defensive point of view. So many of you might start moving him out, but I might still play him for this game week because I'll have other areas to take care of. Attacking return is expected from Luke Shaw, but even a clean sheet is still quite possible. Next is James. Reese James was the last minute addition in my team and it almost paid me off if he wasn't subbed off in 59th minute but unfortunately it turned to be a one pointer for Reese James. Hopes are high on him against West Ham as they are not so good in front of goal. So a clean sheet might be well possible. It remains to be seen how many minutes will he get against the David Moyes side. West Ham are good defensively but if James plays at his best as he did last season, he might still do the damage. Next is Trippier. Not much to say about him. He is a must have as FPL asset, a very easy game against Bournemouth, so a clean sheet is possible and clean sheet means bonus point for Trippier even if he doesn't get attacking returns. But the way Bournemouth is suffering defensively, I think Newcastle will score some goals against him and there is a chance Trippier has some sort of involvement in that. Next is White. There is a slightly bit concern about his minutes but if he plays 60 or 65 minutes in both games in Game Week 23, I think that should do the job and there is no way I'm planning to transfer him out for another Arsenal defender. I'll make sure to have 3 Arsenal players in my team and White is one of them. Arsenal has got an ok double game week. Clean sheet against Brentford is a possibility but of course it won't be the case against Manchester City. Moving into midfield, let's start with KDB. His stats are not as good as it was before the World Cup break, but he is a player that could be crucial and game changer in any moment of time. And we witnessed that against Spurs. Even though they failed to score, CD's games was changed for good when KDB came on in the second half. 
And Pep already mentioned benching Kerry was tactical and that means there is a high chance that he will get good minutes in the double game week. Just like Arsenal, series double game week is also not a very good one. But an extra fixture for a player like him? I just expect a double digit return from him. Next is Fernandez. Bruno Fernandes was brought in by lots of managers for a one week punt, mostly for KDB and it turned to be a good decision for them. I brought him for Martinelli which was a good decision as well. And the managers who brought them for KDB or most likely reversed their transfer to bring KDB back in their team or even Maris for the double game week. So Bruno is set to turn into a differential and I like this differential even though he blanked against Leeds in the midweek an attacking return or two might still be possible against Leeds. I'm planning to keep Fernandez for game week 25 at least if not beyond that but I might do my final moves before the deadline because I'm still trying to plan it wisely and have at least 11 playing players for game week 25 especially those who have double game weeks. Next is Adegar. He has double game week, he is Arsenal's most dangerous attacking player, he is nailed as well. For a double game week, he should be in your team no matter what. And that's it for him, nothing more to say. Final midfielder is Rashford. Having scored against Leeds in the midweek, he is capable of scoring against them once again because Leeds are not so good defensively. Casemiro's suspension might affect Manchester United defensively, but United's attack should still be the same. The form Rashford is in right now, he just can't stop scoring. He scored 3 goals and 1 assist in the last 3 games, meaning 4 attacking returns in just 3 games. He and Trippier are the players that are going nowhere and I can easily bench them in gimmick 25 and play them again in the following week. Moving into forward, Haaland is the forward pick that is in everyone's team, especially if he plays two times in a game week. Of course players like him could blank as well and he did so in the past game weeks. But let's not forget that he is capable of scoring a hat trick as well. There is nothing else to talk about him. And Tony wraps up my starting 11 for the game week. He was a troll since I brought him back to back one pointer in game week 21 and game week 22. But let's not forget that he scored against the likes of Manchester City, Spurs, Newcastle, etc. Maybe this week is the week for Tony to return, but at the same week Arsenal has a double game week. And like I said earlier, I'll triple up on Arsenal players because not only in game week 23, they have a double game week in game week 25 as well. So because Tony has a hard fixture against one of the best defense in the league, I have decided to transfer him out to bring Enketia in. Because first, Tony has a hard fixture against Arsenal and Enketia has a double game week. Second, Tony has blank in game week 25 and Enketia have a double game week in game, game week 25 as well. So that means that Enketia will play three more fixtures than Tony in the space of three game weeks. So this is my transfer plan for this game week, but I will finalize my transfer or transfers before the deadline. And there might be some other changes as well because I have five players who blanks in game week 25 other than Tony. Moving into the bench, Worth of course is the backup keeper plays Brighton home. Andreas has an easy game against Forest, therefore he will cover my first bench. Dank plays Crystal Palace away as in my second bench. And final bench is Nyonto who play United at home. Even though he scored against United in Old Trafford, I don't think it might happen again. There's a high chance that he might blank, so he will be in my third bench, but even my bench order might change before the deadline. Haaland will be my captain for this gaming and Odegaard is my vice captain. Let me know down in the comments below what are your transfer plans and what are the captaincy picks. And that's it for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the content. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.